Okay, so this is the second part of session six. We are talking about exponential families and now we're going to talk a little bit about the, the log partition function and why it is important. So if you remember, like we were discussing about this um, cumulant function, this A function that is just the logarithm of the partition function. And it happens that for the um, exponential family, this cumulant function, it has some really uh, tight um, relations with, with this moment. So it happens that the derivatives of this partition function correspond to the sufficient statistics that we want to compute in every uh, distribution. So for instance, let, let's see what happens when I do the derivative of A with respect of theta. And if you remember, uh, I need to do the, the, the derivative with respect of theta of the logarithm of this partition function, right? And my partition function is set, so is the integral of the exponential of um, theta phi x. Let's just do it in the scalar way because in scalar form because it will be faster and easier to, to just keep up with it. So this is um, the definition of, of the of the log partition function, right? I'm just taking my exponential family, doing the integral, taking the log. Now I want to take the derivative of this. So we just need to, to go and do the apply the chain rule, right? So I want to do the, the derivative of this log. So it's one over the argument of the log times whatever is inside. So that gives me one over this integral over here. And let me just write like this. So it is the exponential of theta v of x, hx of dx, right? Now I need to do the chain rule. So I will do the derivative whatever is inside here, right? So let me just write it down. Theta v of x, hx dx, right? Now I need to do the derivative with respect of theta and the integral does not depend on theta so I can just move it inside and then do the derivative with respect of the exponential that is that is inside inside of there. So this will give me the integral. So now is the exponential is this times the derivative of whatever is inside of it. So that will be the phi of x times this exponential of theta phi of x h of x dx, right? Over this integral again. Uh, hx dx okay cool now um so if you see this over here this is the this this is the set function right this is my my partition function so i can put it in terms of a just by applying the exponential of the logarithm right so this this is equivalent to doing just the exponential of a right the exponential of a of theta, so I can just push it inside over here. And now I can just rewrite this over here. V of x exponential of theta v of x um, a h x dx. So why do I want to do this, right? Now I can just use this exponential and just push them together, right? Because this is not, now it is not a, a function of x. And I can just push it inside of this integral over here. So now I just have my phi of x times the exponential of theta, phi of x minus a theta uh, hx dx. Now, you remember like this is the other shape that we have for our particular uh, distribution, right? So this is p of x actually, this whole thing over here. Um, and since this is p of x, I have, this is the expected value of phi of x with respect of my distribution. So this is just my first moment uh, with respect of p of x. So what I'm doing here actually is just computing the first moment. So that is the relation between my derivative of the cumulant with respect of theta. And that's why we said that this distribution over here uh, has this particular shape. And we can actually do the same thing with um, with the second moment over here. So I can do dA with respect of the second derivative 
oh sorry uh, over here and uh, wh what is this right so I can just apply the same idea over here and let me start by taking um, this particular shape over here so this is the first derivative right this is one of the of the, the shapes of the first derivative that I had and now I want to take a second derivative on top of it okay uh, maybe it would be easier if we take this shape I think instead of just going through that so before the, the doing the p of x okay so what happens here I want to compute the derivative with respect of theta of this integral over here of p of x right and then I'm just going to copy this this part over here so it is the exponential of theta p of x I don't say theta hx dx okay now um, I just want to do uh, the derivative with respect of theta so that means uh, this is constant this is constant and I just need to do the derivative with respect of the exponential and then we need to do uh, the same thing that, that we did before so it is going to be um, just doing chain rule right so this is phi of x times the exponential uh, theta phi of x minus a theta and now I need to do the multiplication with respect of the derivative what is, what, from what, it, what is inside so that should be p of x minus the derivative of a so I'm just going to call it a prime for now hx dx right um, and now again if you remember so for instance this particular part over here and this hx is um, my distribution right so it is the same thing that, that I had before so I can just rewrite it and I call it p of x p of x times my p of x minus a prime theta dx right and now um, I can just split this integral into two parts so this will be the integral of p of x squared p of x dx minus the integral of again this thing over here um, p of x px a prime theta dx right so this if you see it uh, this particular part over here is just expected value of phi of x squared so let's just call it that phi of x squared so this is my, my expected value of that and this over here is what? Uh, this a prime does not depend on, on the on the integral right so I can just take it out and this is just expected value with respect of uh, of phi x and what is the expected value of phi x? Uh, we already know it right? that expected value is actually my 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 theta prime my sorry my a prime the first derivative a so basically this is just uh this thing is squared so it is just the first moment is squared so i'm going to take it and it's e of phi of x is squared and if you remember from our previous sessions when we were discussing about this uh the variance uh this is actually the that that uh famous function that that represents the variance right so this is just the variance of phi of x and if you still do not see it just go and do um just expand the following right we just want to expand phi of x minus the expected value of phi of x Uh, squared and you will end up with the same with the same expression right so yeah though that that is the the how these behave and you can keep doing this for every every single uh, moment and you will end up with the same with the same result so if you want to see it for 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 instance in a, in a particular distribution uh, let's go back and take our, our Bernoulli distribution that we had from the previous part and if you remember uh, given this Bernoulli, uh, given a Bernoulli distribution of x mu, uh, the cumulant was a theta, and we just found out that was the logarithm of, of 
1 plus e theta, right? Now, um, we can use this to solve our problems and we just take the derivative of this. So this is the derivative a with respect of d theta and this is just the derivative of this thing, right? So it should be 1 plus e theta and then the derivative of the thing that is inside e theta, right? And uh, I can just do the division plus e minus theta and this is actually uh, the sigma, right? So this is the sigma of theta and if you remember from the previous session this is actually just my my move parameter that I had, right? This is the move of this particular uh, distribution. So that is the relation that we have between the canonical parameters and, and these parameters of the distribution over here and I can do the same thing, I could compute the second derivative of dt square, right? So um, I can just simply take the derivative. So I know what, what, what is the first one, right? So it is just this one over here. I can take just the second one. So one plus e minus theta minus one, right? I'm just going to write it in this way so it is easier. Now I can just do the, the derivative minus one times one plus e minus theta minus two and then over times the multiplication of the derivative of what is inside, so minus e minus theta, right? And I can just expand this, and this is minus minus is plus, so it's e up to minus theta over one plus e minus theta squared. So if you remember from also the previous session, this we already found out this, uh, this shape, and we can just simply expand it and algebraically work it, and we just have that this is a function of the sigmoid times the positive uh, sigmoid, right? So e minus theta over one plus e minus theta. So it is the, compl the complement, right? So this is basically just a sigmoid of theta times one minus the sigmoid of theta, and the sigmoid is just mu, so I'm going to just jump one step over here, and this is one minus mu, right? And this is my, my second moment. So we can just simply go through the moments and, and find the these these values by applying them okay we will come back with more parts of the exponential family